close your eyes and watch your breath. Keep your mind with the breath and nothing else right now. That's the rain outside, the cold outside. Just leave that outside. You've got the breath coming in and going out. And that can be your safe place. We all need a safe place inside, the part of the mind that's not affected by things outside. Otherwise we get run over by events outside, and our goodness gets smashed. So create a little haven of goodness inside, where there's mindfulness, alertness. You're really trying to do this well. You want to stay with the breath, get the mind a sense of well-being that comes just settling down with one thing for a while, because that's the happiness of the mind, is when it's focused on one thing and stay there without having, be, having to be bumped off. So see if you can stay with the breath. Make the breath as comfortable as you can. You can ask yourself, is long breathing good or short? Fast, slow, heavy, light. After all, you're going to make this your safe place, so you can decorate it and furnish it as you like. So when you come in here, you feel not only safe, but also at ease. And this way you can step back from a lot of the affairs of the world and ask yourself, do you really want to go along with them? You see crazy fads going through the internet, on the media, throughout the society. And sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad. And you have to be able to step out and say, do I really want to follow that? Just because the people around me believe something, do I really believe that? Is it really good for me to believe that? You want to step back and gain your bearings. So it's good to have this spot inside where you can step back, gather your goodness together, realizing you're not just hiding out, but you're giving the mind a safe place from which you can then go and deal with the world in a skillful way. A place where you can remember what the Buddha said about true happiness. True happiness is not found in, in material wealth or in status. It's found in generosity, virtue, and generating thoughts of goodwill for all beings. In other words, you realize that you don't have any ill will for anybody. You don't wish harm or suffering on anyone. That's a good thought to have in mind. And you carry that out through being virtuous and not harming others and being generous, you know, sharing extra things you have, not only your things but also your time your energy, your knowledge, your forgiveness. This way you're protected inside and out. You're sending good things into the world, and you're also keeping what's really good inside, a sense of well-being in the mind that provides the strength from which your goodness can then grow. And then when you want to dedicate this goodness to those who passed away, then you've got a good hunk of goodness to dedicate. It's something solid, something bright, something really good. After all, after people have passed away, then there's no way we can contact them directly, but we can send them the currents of the mind. And this is something that people are sensitive to in ways that are hard to explain, but it's there. And so you want to make sure you send a good current out, one that's based on generosity, virtue, the development of your meditation. It comes from this safe place inside that you build up through your good qualities. So you've got good qualities inside, and you've got good qualities to share. What that means is good qualities all around. What the world may send back at you will regard that simply as the result of past actions. Your past karma is coming back at you. But you want to make sure that your present karma right now that you're sending out is as good as it can be. Because someday that will come back as well. This way everybody benefits.